So Martin, what can we say about Hushabai Mountain? I it's, love this track. It's so beautiful, isn't it? It was very hard to play, actually. Yeah? Uh, How come? So, well, I tried to play it on the nylon string guitar at first, which has a, a, a larger neck. And actually that, at that slow tempo, it really hurts to <laughs> hurt my hand. Oh, sorry. And, <laughs> and um, it was, you know, sometimes you, you think of things being difficult on an instrument, you think, Oh, it's because it's fast, you know, mm. fast is difficult. But sometimes playing something slow and very precise in time is very difficult. So it took me a few attempts to actually get it into my head and my body of how actually to play that descending chordal uh, uh, part at the beginning and that goes through through it and then it goes into another key. So it was it was actually one of the most challenging things for me to play, even though it sounds the simplest. What about singing? Was it was it tricky? Well, there? actually, singing th th that slowly and with with the vibrato that, that comes natural to, naturally to me, you need to have much more consideration when it comes to because I don't like using the word mm. control. It's much more about breath management and and consideration when when the vibrato st starts and feels natural and how it flows to the end of the phrase. It's all the things that you don't really think about, but it's happening. Because it's out of tempo, it's rubato it's, so, yeah. uh, as, as well. So I'm following you as you're singing that and I'm listening mm. to how you're interpreting that and I'm having to follow that at the same time, <laughs> breaking my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an int I love the way that, that you, you bring the song in because it's you describe those first notes as like a, pl a plop, like a yeah. note plops, plop, plop, yeah. and it's just like it feels like a drop of of precious water or or something. Just you can you can visualise it. It's just mm. wonderful, and it really sets the scene. I've never heard this song played so sl as slowly as as, a, as our version. Tony Bennett released it in 1968. Obviously the song was written by Richard Sherman and Robert Sherman, um, wonderful songwriting team. But this is a completely unique version. And mm. I think we've made it our own. That's how I feel about it. And it's so beautiful. It took a lot of concentration and getting yeah. centered. To, to play it, mm -hmm. and, and quite a few times during while I was doing it, I said, okay, hold it together, hold it together, because it, it was so yeah. easily it could come off the rails. You yeah. know, when I was, when I was and also that the um, there's also that 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 tension that you're thinking. Oh, it's not tension, but you're playing it in a relaxed way. But there's the emotional tension. But it sounds very relaxed when we listen to exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But I wasn't relaxed when I was playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed. <laughs> but isn't isn't it? Amazing how that song came together. And every time I remember singing the word hush by mountain, and you can just sing hush, hush by mountain. To sing that differently every time, mm -hmm. just by the length of the hush or hush. There's so many different ways you can just sing the word hush because it's a lullaby. And you'll notice when you listen to the song, for anyone listening in, is that it actually like a, a song normally builds to the end, like crochet, you know, it build up to the um, the last chorus. Or the, we actually bring it right down. Mm. We start off. It's a lullaby to send children to sleep when they're in bed. Also, there's another part in that when we when it goes, it's in E minor. When it goes to the A minor, <laughs> to that part there, and I change the intensity, mm -hmm. and it's. There's a difference between intensity and loudness. Usually if you try to change, lift up the intensity, mm -hmm. you play louder. Mm -hmm. And we manage to really achieve that. And, you know, I get hair stand up in the back of my neck when, when I hear that now. Cause I don't know whether I could do that again. But the, the, we really got that intensity yeah. uh, happening at that point. But we're not you're not singing and I'm not playing louder. No. It's just, it's just got a kind of an intensity. Yeah. It's one of those mysteries about music because I can't f figure out exactly what it is that, that causes amazing. that. Yeah. Now, I, I thought of something though, because you're from Dundee and this has a Dundee connection, oh, doesn't it? it so has a Dundee connection. The song was written for 
Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And the song appears twice in the, in the motion picture, but it's Dick Van Dyke that sings it to his, he's a failed inventor, or a, and he's a, he's a widower, but he sings, sings the song to his children. Now, the, the two children, the boy and the young boy and the young girl in the film, the daughter, Jemima Potts, that's her character's name, it was actually a, a, a young girl called Heather Ripley, and she was from Dundee. Now, there, mm. you think, how did she, how did a, a young girl, I think she was maybe seven or eight years old at the time, how did she get into a, f a big Hollywood film, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? So as it turns out, she was brought up in Dun Brody Ferry in Dundee. Um, her father was an optician. Her mother was the wardrobe assistant in, at Dundee Repertory Theatre. And strangely enough, that's, the old Dundee Repertory Theatre um, was one of the first places I went as a young girl to see theatre, and I was completely hooked and I was drawn into it. So there's every chance that her mother was backstage in the wardrobe, repairing costumes, etc., for the for the shows there. So the, this young Heather Ripley and, and uh, went to London for the audition, and she was perfect for the role. But they said she would have to lose the Dundee accent. So uh, it's a unique accent. It's very unique, <laughs> unique. You. <laughs> so uh, they went off to film, and I think it was about fourteen months she was away from Dundee. And I think that was enough time to work on her accent and iron out the Dundee accent. Well, I'm very proud of my Dundee accent. So, but the, but the connection doesn't stop there because my best friend from school in later years, used to live next door to Heather Ripley. Mm. Mm. And she'd see her going outside, hanging her washing up with her thespian scarf and stuff. You know, it's like, um, so wow. uh, the Dundee connection is like, I don't think she's done any other films, but this Hushabye Mountain, what, what, a, what a song. Mm. And I think Tony Bennett re first released it in 1968, um, before the film was, and the soundtrack was released. So mm. it was already, already out there in a hit. When I listen to it now, it, it is, it's is—it's got such a very relaxed feel to it, despite what we know, how much control it took to actually mm. make it sound that relaxed. I know, <laughs> it's, it's incredible, but it's its so full of emotion. And and also getting back to the, the, the songs for nature, it's, it's all about that emotional connection that we can make with not just family, friends, human beings, but with, with nature itself. And uh, mm -hmm. it's saying goodbye or falling asleep, or it's it captures the essence of the emotion. Well, we're all familiar with the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but wasn't it was a novel first, wasn't it? Well, yet again... An Another Dundee connection. Uh, absolutely. And I, I, I think you I think you know this one, Martin. It's, it's, um, it was based on a novel written by Ian Fleming, who, uh, I think it was a, was it a trilogy, was it three parts? Uh, the who wrote James Bond. He wrote James Bond. Bond, and he wrote Chitty Chitty Bang Bang 1964 mm -hmm. uh, as a children's novel. And, uh, of course, Ian Fleming was brought up in this neck of the woods in Newport, just outside Dundee. So uh, there's yet again, Wow. another Dundee connection. You were born is, for this song. I was totally, I had my name written all over it. I should have been in the film. <laughs> Why didn't I audition for that part? It could have been eight? me. <laughs> should have been me. <laughs> From love. 